We've all got a Strava, haven't we? Well, at least 78 million of us do. Anyway, the real question is whether or not you know all of the cool things that Strava can do, whether that is the app on your phone or the desktop version or even how it works with certain head units. Because you see, I'm not sure that you will do. I certainly didn't, because when we started working with Strava on this video, I felt like I'd uncovered some hidden gems. So see how many of these you already know, and then let us know in the comments section. Okay, let's get started with a cool one that could also make your life easier, the star function. Oh yeah, so when you have created a route on Strava, if you hit the star function, it will automatically sync that route up to a supported device like a Wahoo or a Garmin, meaning that you can follow along to it on your head unit in an instant. And it doesn't just have to be a route that you've created either, you could also take a route directly from someone else's activity. So on the desktop version, find that activity, then hit create route and then save it and it will do exactly the same job. No more faffing around with GPX files. Now perhaps what I use more though is the star function in relation to segments. So again, if you've got a supported device, it will sync up to it, meaning that as you approach said segment on the road or on the trail, it will flash up onto your head unit, warning you that you're getting close, and then when you're on the segment, it'll give you real-time pacing info in relation to either your personal record, the QOM or the KOM, or one of your mates. You will know that there is a whole load of functionality built into segments, I'm sure. But have you ever clicked on the compare icon on the desktop version? When you do, it will show you in detail where you gained or lost time over a segment in comparison either to one of your own efforts or someone else on the leaderboard, be they friend or in this case, foe. Now, it is a fantastic tool for working out how you can get faster. So you can not only smash your personal best over that particular segment, but it can also show you how you can improve your technique and your tactics and your pacing strategy for other segments as well. So you just improve overall. As you can see from this one, I've clearly got quite a bit of work to do before I take on five road riders on my TT bike again. But look, they just got me. You know those cool end of year stats that you get from Strava? Well, did you know there was also a mini monthly version as well? So on the app on your phone, if you hit the U icon and then go to progress, you scroll down, you will see your monthly activities, which is how you're trending this month in comparison to last month. But even cooler, is the recap from the previous month, which goes into loads and loads of detail about like your longest ride and all your achievements. At the bottom of it, you can either share this or set a goal. Now this, I gather, is a smart move. Strava say that they see people's upload rate double in the first 30 days after they've set themselves a goal, which is training-tastic, if you ask me. If you don't use a head unit to record your rides, but use the Strava app on your phone instead, then you definitely might be interested to know that Strava have re-added the ability to pair up a Bluetooth heart rate monitor or a wearable like a Whoop band so you can still record your heart rate. So when you're going to record an activity, simply click on the heart rate icon and then pair it up with your heart rate monitor. Now just remember that you do need to give Strava permission in the settings to use your Bluetooth, otherwise it won't work. But then, job done. You can record your heart rate. Now recording your heart rate is actually probably quite a good idea in that it gives you access to all sorts of super cool training metrics, of which you probably didn't know about some of them either. In fact, there's so many, it's hard to know where to start, but I'm gonna go with two that are linked to heart rate, namely relative effort and also weekly intensity. So relative effort basically measures your cardiovascular load of an activity, meaning that you can see at a glance how individual activities stack up. And it's particularly useful because, as you probably well know, a really short, really hard ride can be just as damaging, just as tiring as a really long, slow one. But now you can see 
see how they all stack up. And actually it's really useful as well if you do more than one sport because you can then draw meaningful comparisons between the two. So there you go, you've got your relative effort there of an activity. And then when you click on that, you can also then see your weekly intensity, which gives you a snapshot of just how hard your week has been, and particularly in relation to other weeks as well. So you can gauge your training load. Are you progressing or are you pushing on too hard? Do you need a rest week? When you Strava your ride to or from work, make sure you hit that commute icon when you're uploading. Why? Because it helps Strava Metro, which is a service that's given free to local planning authorities to help them better manage and plan for their infrastructure, like bike paths. So in fact, don't just limit it to your ride to and from work. Any time that you're walking or riding to the shops or on the school run or to visit mates, Strava it and then hit that commute tag. It's really important, a case in point being Transport for London, who've been using Strava Metro data for years, initially just as a tool to validate cycling infrastructure and showing how implementing it increases the number of bike riders. But now, increasingly, they're using it to work out which roads would most benefit from improvement. So hitting that commute icon is an easy way to help do your bit to help other cyclists and yourself as well. And because Strava doesn't charge for access to this data, it's not like they're profiting off your data, if that kind of thing bothers you. You know sometimes you finish your ride and you forget to press stop, only to find after you've driven home and you've uploaded your activity that you now top a whole load of leaderboards and you've got to find a way to manage that guilt of knowing that that 40 mile an hour average speed over that segment is not due to the fact that you're God's gift to cycling. No, we have all been there. But it doesn't have to be a case of deleting the activity or setting it to private. You can actually crop that activity and simply remove the bit that you don't want anymore. You can do it by clicking into the activity and then on the app, you hit the three buttons in the top right, click crop, and then you can remove either end as you see fit. Now, another really cool training feature is making use of the perceived exertion recorder. Perceived exertion basically being training jargon for how hard a ride has felt. So when you are uploading a ride, make sure you use that perceived exertion slider to record just how much that ride has taken out of you. Because what it'll do is it'll build up an accurate indication over time of how hard you're training, how hard you're pushing. And as good as power data and heart rate data is, you also need perceived exertion to unlock all the insights that your body is giving you. And what it also does here is it opens up another metric called monthly fitness, okay? So this one is super cool. It tracks how much you've been doing, how hard you've been doing it, and then it also works it out in relation to your recovery, and it plots it on a graph. Now your monthly fitness score is relative only to you, so there's no comparing it to other people, but you'll see it gives you a fantastic snapshot of how your form is changing over time. As you can tell, it's building up and down a couple of years. Strava's mapping function has had loads of additional development in recent time. The ability to draw a route on the mobile app and then have Strava fit it to the closest roads nearby has just been wondrous. It's a great time saver as well as being fantastic for lovers of Strava art as well. But what's also been cool is how Strava have harnessed all the data from the billions of uploads that it has in its servers to create a route finding algorithm that means it can plot routes for you. Okay, so if you go to the mapping function on the app, click on routes, and then you can collect what type of ride you want to do, how long, how hilly, and in fact, whether you want it to be on road or on dirt, and then you can simply click on one of the options available to you. Just remember to save it and then also star it so it ends up on your head unit so you can follow along.
Now, one of the coolest things about Strava, whether you're a subscriber or a casual user, is that ability to support other bike riders and other athletes. Kudos. Who doesn't love receiving that little notification when someone has given you a thumbs up for your most recent epic ride, or indeed, just the fact that you rode to work this morning in the rain. So kudos is a good thing. More kudos is even better. So why not drop a kudos bomb? Oh yeah, who knew there was such a thing? I certainly didn't. So you can do it on an activity where you've done it with other people, okay? So when you go into that activity and you'll see the list of people that you've done it with, if you click on manage group and it opens up the list of everyone there, rather than going through individually and kudosing their activity, if you give your phone a shake, there you go, kudos all athletes, bomb dropped. So there you go, a whole load of super cool features you'll wish you had known about. At least seven, I think, were completely new to me. Remember, let us know in the comments section how many of those you already knew about. Perhaps we can find our most accomplished Strava users. And also let us know if there are any Easter egg features that we have missed off this list. Finally, please also give this video a big thumbs up, a kudos, if you will, if you've enjoyed it.